Hey, John Hickok here. Today we're going to take a look at this really neat Colt Commando that's sort of Frankenstein from some other parts and things, and uh, we'll get into that. But first, let's shoot this thing. I know that's what you really want to see. And it just so happens that this one is full auto. So you got this little green guy down here. We got the other one. All right, we got a bowling pin. More bowling pins. What else we got? Uh, let's put it on semi real quick. We probably got a couple shots left. Let's get the big red square over there. Just to show you, it's uh, versatile. It's not a one trick pony. Oh, look at that. <laughs> one round, one hit. All we needed. All right. First, before we get into this thing, of course, we always appreciate our support for this video very quickly, uh, partially because this is, like I said, a full auto select fire. Okay, so this is a gun, a, a rifle, as a lot of people would know as the Colt Commando. Um, also, the it, it has many names. Car 15, Colt Commando, XM177 E2, uh you know uh, colt model 629 just colt carbine ar-15 m16 there's a lot of different ways you there's a lot of things you could call this and you wouldn't necessarily be always 100 percent accurate or 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 wrong necessarily so really what it is closest to is uh it's basically an xm 177 e2 uh without the moderator on it which if you're not familiar with what the moderator is I have an example of one over here. This is a non-functioning moderator, All right? So this uh, device here, it's a, basically it's a muzzle device that was uh, used on these early carbines during the uh, Vietnam War primarily, and I think uh, to some degree after that, uh, to help with uh, the, th there's some different theories on this, but I, the one that seems to be the most correct is that it was uh, designed to change the sound of the gunfire to sound more like an AK and less like an AR, because you know when an AR is fired, it, it has a very distinctive sound if you're familiar with uh, with firearms at all, just because of this uh, smaller, faster bullet compared to the uh, slightly larger, slower uh, 762 by 39 round, which of course basically all AKs fired, you know, during the time this gun was in service. So if you were in a if you're an American in a gunfight in the jungle, you didn't necessarily sound like an American right away, right? And um, because of some of the, the guts and the internals of, of these, it was it, it didn't make them quiet, but it, it took the decibels down just enough to where our, uh, our good buddies uh, on the ATF decided that it was a silencer. So um, you can't get one of these without buying it in the same way that you would a, a silencer in states uh, where they're illegal which speaking of that uh, we also appreciate our support from silencer central uh, so please uh, check them out if you're interested in buying a suppressor um, so perfect look at that perfect segue Un unreal silencercentral.com okay so this is not a real moderator it's just a empty empty tube but it gets gives you the kind of the same look right so uh, imagine this on this gun now they didn't all have it you know you can look at old photos from Vietnam and um, all, all of these, not, not all of these, all of these had it. And there were also different barrel lengths. Primarily they would have been 10 inches or 11.5, which this one is the 11.5, which they found was a little bit better for reliability. Um, but I also have, so I have another upper almost exactly like this. I bought them both at the same time. And it is also a 10 inch barrel. I thought about bringing it, but I thought, I don't know, just, over over complicate things but i've shot it quite a bit and and not had any any problems with it at all it's functioned flawlessly but you also with the 10 inch barrel you know because as you know this is your gas block right here so if the barrel tenant to get a 10 inch barrel it's basically it stops like right there right so you don't have as much dwell time which you kind of want to make the gas system operate a little bit better so the 11.5 inch barrel kind of aids in that even though the 10 inch barrel did work and before 
making this video, I looked at a, looked through a ton of old uh, photos of guys in uh, Vietnam with these, and I, most of the ones I saw, they had the, the 10 inch barrel, but of course had the moderator on there, which may have helped a little bit. Okay, let's shoot it some more. I don't want to talk too much and not shoot, because that's the cool part about what we're doing here. Let's go ahead with one of these 30 round magazines, which they did have in Vietnam, but in very limited numbers. I read somewhere that only a thousand of them uh, were issued during the Vietnam War, which is a crazy small amount. So they were, they were rare, and if you did have one, you were probably in Special Forces, which is that's what this gun was, who, who was primarily, of course, using these uh, carbine M16s. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's, I guess, start out back over there on the hill since we're already in semi, you know. Might as well be convenient to just to stay in semi automatic for a minute. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try that red uh, circle there in the middle, the middle one. Well, I guess there's four, so there's technically no middle, but the uh, circle on the left. I can't really see where I'm going. I think I'm all around it. Hard to see. One disadvantage, of course, of something like this, you have the shorter sight radius, radius versus um, you know the full size rifle like the M16A1 or the M16A2. But it's a lot lighter. And still pretty controllable on full auto, which is what I like to do with this thing. Let's uh, let's put a a burst on the target, the paper target. There we go. That's not too bad. <laughs> Super close range, of course. Um, but I, you know, I, I kind of thought. When I first, so this used to be an M16A1. You know, I, I bought a transferable M16A1, and we did videos with it, and and I've seen it on the channel a bunch of times. And I kind of had the plan that at some point, once I kind of had my fun with it in that configuration, I was going to convert it into uh, to to this you know this version of the M16 platform. And I have to say, I was pretty surprised by how controllable it still is considering how how much you know lighter and and smaller it is and everything it's it's pretty neat I, i'm really enjoying this a lot so the way this came about was i bought a uh, a parts kit which essentially was a you know it's like i said it's a colt commando or xm177 e2 and it came with literally everything except for the lower receiver which i would assume on the original gun was probably you know full auto and you know, and not registered and everything. So it was just a cut up receiver. Though there was no receiver, but I'm sure it was destroyed at some point. And there's just the rest of the parts, right? So I got the the old original aluminum uh, stock here. Uh, of course, the buffer tube, the sling, which is really cool. This is a really neat old sling. And you can see here the the upper, I'll take my ears off so I can hear myself think. Uh, this upper receiver you can see has really really been through it um, so it's it's seen some use odds are it was over in the field in Vietnam very good chance of that or, or at the very least it was definitely put to use and I mean very likely it was just some gun that was sitting in a warehouse somewhere and you know I don't know somebody somebody got them and realized if they cut up the receivers they could sell them to civilians I don't know how common these parts kits are out there on the market but i haven't i haven't seen a lot of them and, and it wasn't cheap so 11.5 inch barrel one interesting thing is um now of course someone could have put this gas block on here you know I, I don't know if all these parts are matching to the the rest of the kit you know i, I have no idea but it this would indicate because of how it the uh there's no bayonet lug and it's just smooth on the bottom 
that it would indicate that it was made originally as as a carbine and I, I saw somewhere that the um, rivet right here and it being smooth on the bottom could indicate that it's a 1969 but I don't know if that's true or not but I would guess late 60s early 70s something like that uh, just based on everything else now the uh, the slip ring on here <coughs> that keeps the hand guard on and the, the heat shield this is from a it looks like appears to be from a later gun because if you look over here on dad's uh, SP, SP1 car 15 which is basically the civilian legal version that uh, Colt sold like throughout the 80s um, see how it has the flat version of that so that was looks like was replaced at, at some point you know and then um, I've got this is a an original old really old a1 grip you can see how it's got kind of a different texture to it than this other one does so it's like goes back to the really early furniture and it came from a set that I bought back when I had it you know set up as an a1 so I just thought it looked really cool but you can see the finish doesn't totally match because you know my lower is from a uh, a 1980s m16 a1 but it still looks pretty cool it's pretty neat I'm really enjoying it it's getting hot but let's shoot it again it's too much fun not to I may try to redeem myself over there on the hill a little bit later we'll see all right what we got we got two thirties we're gonna get those watermelons here in a minute you know what let's uh let's do that uh, sooner rather than later I'm just I'm gonna take out these pots first though we gotta do a little pot smoking with the potentially 1969 Colt Commando. It feels right. All right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a little bit closer so I don't shoot me a damn steel. Okay, I'll start on the big one up there. All right, let's get the trio. <laughs> I didn't damage the steel target, but took the chain out. All right, we'll come back to that pot later. Let's go ahead and get these watermelons while we're nice and warmed up. Can't make you wait too long on this one. All right, here we go. Well, I was gonna put another mag in, but that pretty much <laughs> that pretty much took care of it. <laughs> I don't want to waste it. Okay, back up. That was pretty fun. Well, this thing is hot. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit. Tell you a couple more things before we wrap up on the shooting, and most importantly, try to redeem myself <laughs> on shooting that target over there. I don't know where. I was hitting, but this is not a uh, a gun that I'd, you know, whatever shoot that kind of range with very often, or 80, even 80 yards. Just kind of a toy, fun to play with, but very cool. Just like something really aesthetically pleasing about these short little carbine ARs. I don't know. I grew up seeing them in the movies and and um, you know, like Platoon and and even I think um, was it Sarah Connor and uh, Terminator 2. I think. Had had a Colt Commando. I think it had even had the moderator on it and everything. I mean, they're just really neat little guns, handy, super light. I love the sling, the way it works. I won't <laughs> demonstrate it now because the barrel is so hot. But but you just got to throw it over your shoulder and uh, walk around with it. It's it's uh, it's pretty sweet. I'll show you a couple of the differences here between you know kind of the real deal Colt Commando and these uh, uh, Car 15s that were the SP ones that were sold. Uh, to civilians back in the day so as you can see here just like with all you know most of the sp1s and even the sp2s you had older style uh, lower and upper upper receivers right even though these came out in the 80s when they were going full steam ahead with the a2s you still had pre a1 upper and lower receiver right you don't have the fencing around the magwell you don't have the uh forward assist and then, um, of course, other than that, it's basically, oh yeah, and you don't, I was thinking there's one more thing. 
you don't have the quick detach upper and lower sorry you have to uh, actually use a screwdriver there so that's a little bit different but everything else is pretty much the same you had to have the longer barrel of course so that it's legal and not an SBR or anything like that but it's basically the same gun here that same aluminum stock you know just uh, very well made fun to shoot guns very light this actually used to be mine and traded uh, traded to dad for some stuff because I figure it's redundant now that I have this thing is a little bit redundant but very very cool guns and you know what's crazy is I remember I bought so this this is kind of considered the to be the Colt model 629 and then you also may be familiar with the model um, 733 I believe it is they consider it the heat gun which it's basically this gun except in all black it's when they went away from like the uh, the gray finish forget what they call it uh, it's not it's not parkerized I don't think it's something else but um, but they went with the, the cold one with the black finish right well familiar with that of course that's what ARs are like now and then it had it still had the a1 the 733 still had the a1 carry handle style and, and sight rear sight but it had the brass deflector and if you watch the movie heat uh, I believe it's I think damn I hope I'm not remembering this wrong but I think Val Kilmer had one I hope that's right but um, Otherwise, the, the action movie nerds will be very uh, furious with me if I got that wrong. But um, I, my, one of my, my first AR ever was the uh, Bushmaster, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, I'm, I'm blanking on it, but it basically Bushmaster made that exact gun, you know, in the early 2000s, and that was not considered old school. It wasn't like a retro throwback or anything like that. I mean, you had the uh, detachable uh, carry handles with rails and stuff back then but it's just I guess all that to say it's just crazy how quickly this went the the fixed carry handle went from just kind of like oh yeah a lot of ARs have that that's kind of standard to like oh this is like a collector's item you know so that was a lot a long way around the barn to get to that point but I just I don't know that that to me is interesting and I'm only 34 years old and that happened just in my short adult lifespan you know so that it's kind of interesting very neat guns all right let's uh shoot it just a few more times and then let you guys go what do we have left here in the way of ammo all right we got a 20 rounder and we got a 30 rounder let's save the 30 rounder for full auto and then i'm going to try to shoot over on the hill again see if i can redeem myself not that you guys care or even that the people who saw me missing a billion times are even still watching Maybe you guys, if you run into them later or something, if I start hitting it, you can tell them. you be like, hey, you got better. Or, or that I didn't, you know. All right. As much as I love this sling, one thing that's a little bit irritating sometimes is so it bunches up like that. So let's go. Pull it down. Maybe I have it on there wrong. I don't know. Okay. Semi-automatic. Well, this thing is hot. Okay, let's start on the big one, the big square. All right. Okay. All right, now on to the circle. was that four out of five or three out of four whatever it was I'll take it see I got better okay we've got this well let's save that all right we gotta take out these two liters let's go let's go to the pink one first Ooh. get the green ones well, let's finish off this pot that I somehow missed with 30 rounds of full auto What else? Do we have anything else? It's a bowling pin right here. Okay. We got 30 rounds left. Full auto. And we've got a 24 pack of soda right there. The dad painted black for us. Okay. Not 
Nice. Well. <laughs> I thought, I was like, why is the muzzle flash getting more intense? R.I.P. the A1 flash hider. <laughs> it doesn't seem like the threads are damaged. So, we'll see if we can find that. <laughs> Luckily, those things are not too hard to come by. And I have, I have some other ones, but... All right, well, there we go. It fell off at the right time. It, it knew that I was done, and I was like, I'm getting out of here. I got somewhere to be. All right, well, I appreciate you guys, guys for hanging out and uh, experiencing this very cool little rifle, um, Colt Commando carbine, full auto. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be able to even own something crazy like this. I uh, wish more people could. It's such a neat neat gun, and uh, excited to bring it to you guys today, and, uh, and I hope you'll see it more on this channel. Appreciate you guys coming out and see you next time. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh man. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns it's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years so ballastol talon grips definitely check both of those companies out and also while you're on the internet don't forget to go to hickok45.com you can also find us on facebook hickok45 twitter hickok45 instagram the real hickok45 and also i have an instagram page where i post behind the scenes stuff and everything's like that john j-o-h-n underscore h-i-c-k-o-k four five on instagram and uh the next thing you have to do is watch more videos